Hey everyone, welcome back to DIY Biotech. Today, we're talking about the new CRISPR on-off system. This paper was only published uh, a couple of weeks ago by some researchers out at MIT, and I think there's some collaborators in University of California, San Francisco. Uh, the researchers at MIT, I know for sure, have previously worked on CRISPR systems in the past. They developed something called CRISPR-I and CRISPR-A for inactivation and activation. So the lab at MIT knows what they're doing. So CRISPR is talked about all the time for its affinity for gene editing. And I think one of the interesting parts of CRISPR is how precise it is. It can go into a very specific site using something called a guide RNA. The guide RNA tells CRISPR where to go Ooh, almost fell and additionally where to cut in in the wild type configuration so CRISPR by itself all it does is it's told where to go with a guide RNA and then the Cas9 enzyme makes a precise cut now with this technology you can knock out genes that's the most obvious solution and then you can also insert genes so if you have homologous sec sections of DNA on either side of your gene that match up with where you cut in the genome, then the cell's internal repair mechanisms will insert that gene. But again, that localization feature is so important. The, the specificity of being able to tell a molecule exactly where to go in a genome is incredibly important. And so those researchers at MIT, what they did is a few years ago, this is a slightly older technology, they developed the CRISPR activation and CRISPR inactivation technologies. And the way that they do this is they use a mutant Cas9 enzyme called dead Cas9 or DCAS9 that doesn't have the ability to cut anymore. It's sort of uh, handicapped in that way. But the advantage of it is you can give Cas9 little packages or couple it to other enzymes that go in and enhance the expression of that gene or physically block the transcription of that gene so that gene is never transcribed but the DNA is not modified in any way. So the advantages of CRISPR activation and CRISPR inactivation is that you can send molecules to a specific site in the genome and activate or silence genes without even editing the sequence. And so these changes aren't heritable, and that's important for a variety of reasons. It's looking good up here. It's a hot day though. Got a long ways to go. So now, what if we could have the advantages of normal CRISPR function in that it's heritable without having the disadvantages of having to modify the genome? Well, that's sort of what this CRISPR on-off technology is. So CRISPR on-off can silence genes or activate genes without modifying the DNA sequence. Now, how is that? How, how, how can you do that? Isn't DNA the heritable genetic material? Well, I've talked about this before in a previous video, but of course, there, there's this field of study called epigenetics. It's a relatively young field. Uh, genetics in general is a relatively young field. Uh, and epigenetics includes things like methylation and histone modifications. They're literally levels of code or levels of information encoded in your genome, but not encoded in the DNA sequence. So these epigenetic changes are by definition heritable changes. So CRISPR on-off functions by modifying your epigenome, by adding methylation markers or removing methylation markers, you can change the expression of your genome. So now we have it. We, we, we have all the advantages of being able to make heritable changes to the genome, but we don't have to modify the sequence. You know, there's some dangers and some stigma of modifying the DNA sequence you know, GMO products, uh, and, you know, potentially we can make changes that are not reversible. 
and that's that's genuinely a concern there are some uh ungrounded fears in in gmos but uh you know being making changes to a genome permanently is not necessarily super reversible right now so if we can just change the methylation marks and we can change the methylation marks back and forth without any consequences then this technology could be used to modify crops without them necessarily being GMO uh, and it could be used to treat genetic diseases that are caused by genes that are turned on that shouldn't be or genes that are turned off that shouldn't be look at that nice so in an article by MIT about this paper that they published they suggested that one of the applications of this technology is to treat a certain gene that's expressed in Alzheimer's patients that shouldn't be expressed and potentially that would be nice if we could you know use this technology to help treat or even cure Alzheimer's but talking to a few people including even professors and and specifically uh, plant sciences and um, genetic engineering and, and things like that we haven't really come up with ways that this can be used to treat existing problems so my sort of ask my sort of question here is does anybody have any suggestions of how this technology could be used to treat a disease or to add value to a crop or or something like that it just it's hard for me to think of situations where you need to either remove methylation or add methylation and that would solve all your problems it it, it seems like a really cool technology it has the word CRISPR in it it's coming out of MIT and the University of California San Francisco so what am I missing here what what are the applications of this technology what can this technology be used to treat so anyway I hope you learned something today oh I almost fell again <laughs> anyway I hope you learned something today uh, if you did like and subscribe if you have suggestions for you know how CRISPR on off can be used in the real world please leave them in the comments below I'll read all of them I'll I'll, I'll reply to them uh, I want to know what everybody thinks um, again I think this is a really awesome technology the article for the technology uh, that's written by MIT is in the description below there's also the scientific paper and the the DOI for that if you are interested in reading the actual paper but anyway thanks for coming along on the hike I'll uh, see you in the next one bye